Hello, and welcome to this video about Oracle content and experience and how you can use Oracle content and experience for your own headless CMS needs. Today, we're going to be covering the OCE JET blog sample, which is based on the Oracle JET framework developed by Oracle. As you can see, we have a GitHub repository here already available for you to pull from and to begin to develop right away. Let's get started. The very first thing you want to do is to go ahead and clone this repository directly into one of your directories in your own machine. Next, we're going to change directories into that directory that we've just cloned. And now, as you can see, we have a full list of all of the files and directories that we need to begin to develop with Oracle Jet on Oracle content and experience. The very first thing we want to do is to make sure that we have all of our dependencies for this application. So the very first thing we want to do is go ahead and install all of our dependencies that are involved in this project. Wonderful. Now that we have everything we need, we can go ahead and open up this code base that we've just cloned into our own machine in a code editor such as Atom. Let's take a quick th tour through some of the files that we have available here. And let me just resize this window so you can see these tabs up here. There we go. The very first thing that we want to take a look at is within the SRC directory, you'll see a set of folders here, config, CSS, JS, themes. The very first thing we want to take a look at is the config folder and the oce.json file here. As you can see here, one of the things that we offer is the ability to configure your server URL or the base URL of your Oracle content and experience instance, the API version that you should target with our REST APIs, and of course, a channel token that is used to make sure that you are able to authenticate and um, uh, access all of the content that you need to access. Now, one of the most important things to remember is that this information here should never be housed in a source controlled code base um, because of the fact that uh, if you actually expose some of this information to uh, folks in public, what will happen is you might be vic a victim of, of distributed denial of service attacks um, unless you make sure to configure your cross origin resource sharing properly. One of the approaches that's very common to obfuscate these values is using a library such as .env and storing environment variables in your infrastructure provider um, and using process.env in order to access those environment variables rather than using um, hard-coded information and configuration about your Oracle content and experience instance. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're building today and what it looks like. The npm start command is the way that the Oracle Jet sample here is able to put together a local development environment for us to actually test this in a working browser. One note about this environment variable system, by the way, uh, in order to navigate to the cross-origin resource sharing uh, section within the settings in Oracle Content Experience, all you have to do is click on System and access the security settings in order to configure which domains are able to access um, your uh, Oracle content and experience domain. Now, as you can see here, we've now got a working local development environment with localhost 8000. 8000 is the port. And as you can see here, this is actually content that is coming directly from Oracle content and experience. Um, so just to take a very quick tour through some of the things that we're looking at today, 
As you can see here, we're starting out with a topics page that includes a list of topics. The topics are how to, drinks, and recipes. And if we navigate into one of these, you can see that there are several articles that we can click on. Each of these articles has information. When we click on one of these articles, we can see that there's an author field as well as the content that's coming in from the article. So how do we actually build this out within uh, our code base using Oracle Jet and make sure that we have all of this content represented within our application? Well, let's start with the most important piece of our services layer within this application, which is located in the JS folder and within the scripts folder of our uh, OCE Jet blog sample repository. As you can see here, when we open up this server config utils.js file, you can see that this is actually making sure that um, all of the information that we've provided is available to uh, our application and also make sure that um, we can resolve that configuration um, into something that makes perfect sense. Now, one of the things that this uh, server config utils is also responsible for is instantiating the uh, OCE content SDK so such that we can actually use, um, use certain methods available from the OCE content SDK within the Oracle Jet framework to make a lot of these requests much easier for us down the road. So within the services folder, or sorry, within the services file, you can see that we have quite a few methods that we've defined that are responsible for fetching some of these important uh, information that we can query from the REST API for content delivery in Oracle content and experience. One of the first things you'll notice is fetch homepage, which is responsible for fetching a certain uh, content type here known as homepage and retrieving some of the most important information that we need from that API response. We also have fetch topic, which is going to be used to populate our individual article pages and our, our individual topic pages. Of course, fetch articles to get that list of articles. Fetch article, which will go ahead and get a single article that is from our uh, content model. And now uh, one of the features that is available in Oracle Content Experience for headless CMS users is the ability to pull out individual renditions of images. These are versions of images that are optimized for certain dimensions or for certain conditions that are um, important for your application. So as you can see here, we've got two different methods defined, one for getting the medium size rendition of that uh, image, as well as getting um, just the regular rendition without any adjustments to that image. Let's go ahead and take a look inside some of these uh, files that are responsible for passing this data over to um, the application. But, very f but, but uh, before we do that, let's take a very quick look at the overarching route definition. Inside the appcontroller.js file within the JS folder underneath SRC, you can see that we have a couple of different things that are defining routes for our application that define the URLs at which all of these different application views will be available. Now, uh, because of the fact that uh, Oracle Jet is based on Knockout.js, which is a framework for uh, uh, implementing MVVM uh, applications, one of the things you can see here is that we've got um, the ability to define a router and here is the global definition of all of the routes that we need to provide for our application. Also, what you can see here is that we're also loading in certain components uh, or modules from uh, both the views folder and the view models folder. The view models folder is going to be where we're headed next because that's where uh, the vast majority of our um, uh, methods are being used in order to populate the various routes in this application. So let's take a look at the first view model, which is uh, topics list. As you can see here in topics list, what we're doing here is using our server config utils and also instantiating our, de our delivery client, which is uh, being pulled from our content SDK, performing uh, those invocations of those methods that we defined in our services layer over here to provide um, the ability for each of these individual um, components to retrieve the data that they need. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as well is that um, this is also going to be responsible for uh, performing all of the things that 
we need to do uh, in terms of actions. So things like on-click um, actions that will change routes and allow for users to be able to uh, actually change routes without having to incur a browser refresh. Let's go over to the next uh, item here, which is the topic list item. As you can see, it's a very similar uh, uh, kind of code. Uh, we've got the server config utils once again. We've got another instantiation of our, our, our uh, content SDK's delivery client. And now we have a fetch here with all of the things that we need to populate um, our, uh, um, our uh, application route here. Next, let's go over to topic list item. Uh, that's where we just were, excuse me. Let's go over to articles list JS. Um, and by the way, this is now the list of articles that is associated with each topic. Once again, we're pulling in information from uh, all of the things that we need to uh, get from our SDK. And as you can see here, we're fetching information here, fetching uh, the individual content types. So uh, topic here is a content type within our OCE, or our, our, our Oracle Content Experience instance, as well as the articles that we're gonna need to populate this route. And of course, the other interaction methods that we need to enable, uh, such as navigating to other routes. Next, let's go over to the article list item. Now, this is the individual list item within that list of articles on that topic page. As you can see, once again, we're uh, going ahead and retrieving our uh, delivery client and getting all of our information that we need. And finally, uh, in the article details.js file, you can see that all of our um, data that we fetched is uh, something that we can now use in other portions of the application. Now, all of the rendering for each of these individual uh, um, uh, components takes place within the views folder uh, underneath src.js. And you can see here that um, uh, using a typical Oracle Jet syntax, you can go ahead and perform bindings. You can go ahead and make sure that all of the rendering of that data performs as expected. And of course, all of the directives that you need to set up to enable uh, cross route navigation and uh, client-side navigation. So uh, this is a very good example of the separation of concerns between uh, declarative rendering of the data that we need to provide. And of course, the actual retrieval of the data is taking place in an entirely uh, different section here in the view models directory. And this is uh, very much in line with not only Oracle Jet's approach to MVVM architectures, but also uh, uh, correctly in alignment as well with the way that Knockout does this uh, as well. So that's a quick tour through the code base here. Um, and let's go ahead and go back to our working local development environment to take a look at these things again. As you can see, um, each of these uh, individual items here is pulling from the data directly from the Oracle Content Experience instance that we've configured. And if we go into one of these, um, as you can see, we just had some client-side navigation take place that brings us to uh, the correct route. And if I click into one of these articles, you can see that we've got our, our uh, data represented here. Once again, all of this information is coming from Oracle Content Experience in a headless fashion, API-driven. None of this uh, data is hard-coded, which means that if we were to go into our Oracle Content Experience instance and modify this data, and redeploy this application within our local development environment, we would see all of these updates to that content uh, take place. So that was a very quick tour through the Oracle Jet blog sample for headless Oracle content experience. Um, thank you very much for joining this tutorial and uh, have fun building.